Um, I'm going to make this video about this game I'm playing, and I'm going to always talk about positioning. That's the only thing I'm going to talk about in this video, so this video is exclusively about positioning your units. So in the early game with creeps, just, you know, draw them in a line, doesn't really matter. But the idea about positioning in this game, and we'll talk about some fundamentals during the beginning of this game, is understanding that you have to pay attention to the way the units act over time. I think that's a big deal. Um, the best way to actually learn positioning, other than listening to like some fundamentals that I'll talk about, is simply by watching how the units behave on board. Um, like assassins attack differently, ranged heroes will attack differently, gaining an understanding of how much range a hero has. Um, because if a hero is in, within range of something, it'll just start attacking it. But if it's not, then it'll move in a certain direction to attack it. So understanding that basic concept is really important um, over the course of uh, playing this game. Um, so when, you, when, when it comes to positioning. So the key to positioning in Dota Chess is making it so that the units attack the units you want them to attack. They take the appropriate amount of damage that you want them to take. And that you avoid getting countered by as many things as possible. So in the early game... It's mainly about, ideally, overall optimizing your lineup. In the later parts of the game, it's about looking at other people's boards, seeing they have assassins, seeing they have disruptors or massive AoE, and then positioning based on what other people have gone. So in the early game, there's really no way to like plan around what other people have done. Um, you just have to uh, optimize your own units. So we'll talk about every unit I place on the board from now on. I guess I should have taken Tinker. I was busy talking about the game for the Goblin bonus, not just because I got two Tinkers. Um... Enchanted, I'm sure. I'll just sharpen my spear and I'm ready to... Got, got dirt. Juggernaut stands ready. Uh... I 100% should have taken Tinker. I was just busy talking. So when it comes to positioning... The unit that has... That's based on how many squares will attack them is how you can predict how much damage they'll take. So Tinker's a unit that only really does damage if he takes damage, because that's how you gain mana. So if I place Tinker and Clockwork here and here, they would be equally likely to take damage, because they're both, like, have five spaces that can attack them, and they're both halfway around the game. But if you place Tinker here and Clockwork here, Tinker will take a little bit more damage on average than Clockwork, because of the fact that he is... Um, like, he has this whole side of the board will attack him, while Clockwork only has this side of the board that will attack him. So he'll take about 60% more dam- or 60% damage, while Clockwork will take about 38%, based on 5 out of 8. Um, okay, so... Now that we have a Clockwork upgraded, we actually want him to take slightly more damage than Tinker. We want Tinker to be possibly alive for two, um, volleys of, of attacks here. And we're actually going to sell tree and then get the upgrade to put forks on the field. And so Axe is a good tank. And we're going to put Axe over here to tank damage as well compared to Jug. So we want Axe and Clockwork to take damage. And we don't mind if Tinker takes some damage. So Tinker will take any damage from here. Clockwork will take damage from here. Axe will take damage from here. And Jug will only take damage if the unit's like right here. And we don't want Jug to take damage, right? So that's why we're putting him over here. And the only reason we separated our units is because we have two units we specifically want to take damage. Um, that isn't always the case, right? If I had four units like this and I only wanted Axe to take damage, I'd do Axe and then the other three right here. So that Axe would take the most damage. Uh, CK is strictly better than those two units, so... so. I had other good units, by the way. That's why I sold the enchantresses early. I think Druids are pretty trash in general. Um, and since I had good other units, I didn't have to play the druids, so I just used them for free gold. Um, so SF Razor is a really good combo. Um, we can sell CK because we just have two better demons now. Um, hmm, what do we want to do here? Uh, this was a mistake. I thought we had eight gold for some reason. So we're going to do this. And we're going to take the Axe Jug off the field for now. Because we have a good front line. We want the Goblin bonus. And so we want Razor a little farther to the left because his damage nuke is based on how far away people are if you don't know Dota. Um, 
the farther away he hits units, then the more damage his ability does. So we want him a little farther to the left. But we want him behind here so that uh, we want them next to each other so their abilities will hit at about the same time. So when it comes to AoE magic nukes, the one downside of them is that they give mana to the opponent units because you get mana by taking damage. So whenever you have like two AoE units, you want to try to position them such that they go off at about the same time. Um, so that if you give mana to units, it's you're killing them um, rather than um, just giving them mana. Um, and then letting them live. You want to kill them in the full volley. Um, so, like I said, I'm not going to talk about any of the decisions this game because I'm busy focusing so much on talking about positioning. Um, let's see. So notice how I have Tinker here that I want to take damage, but not enough to die, so I have him here. I have Clockwork, the most tanky unit that I want to take the most damage here. Like, Clockwork will take damage from everywhere over here, Tinker will take it from right here, and Razor might get hit if there's a unit like right here. And we just want the proper distribution of, of damage. And notice how it's working I out. See, like Clockwork's barely living, Tinker's barely living. And this is the kind of thing that you want to happen. And this is all based on understanding of positioning, right? Look at how like look at how my units are barely living. And that's like why positioning is so important in this game. If you can keep units barely alive, then uh like that's the goal with positioning. You're optimizing how your units play. Um uh, Am I messing something up with the stream here? Sorry. Somebody says overlay. It must have been my donation or something. Oh, we got a level 2 axe. So we're actually going to do this. And then he's just going to be a distraction. He's just like a tank on the side. Um, Because we want Clock to still take damage. And he can just serve as like maybe an anti-mage or something will hit him the whole time. But we want Clockwork... Is to still be our frontliner. Um, so let me think about these decisions here. So we're definitely getting rid of you. I don't have enough gold to get both these warriors, so I'll take the lichen. So I'm only going to update if our positioning changes or I feel like I messed something up based on what I see. Oh, brutal. Um. From the deeps, I rise. So as of now, um, when you're watching this game, just pay attention to the things that my units like why my units are living and just keep noticing how what I'm telling you is paying off for me. I think it's been pretty clear thus far how it's paying off. If I wanted Bounty Hunter to be like a tanky assassin or put him on the front lines, I'd have to play him in somewhere that he's not going to jump the back lines. But by having assassins in the back, they will do that where they jump units in the back. So I'm gonna lose this round, it looks like. I am a little light on damage. That is my problem, because my SF's my only real damage source. And my Bounty Hunter and SF are both level 1. My Tinker also died immediately there. So now we're getting to the point where Tinker takes a little bit too much damage to sit in the front line like that. So we have to be, uh... We have to think about repositioning him. So that he takes damage, but not enough to kill him. Unless we get an upgrade. Um, but we got Razor. Um, so at this point, I think Tinker and Razor, or sorry, Tinker and Bounty Hunter are just not worth what they're giving us, because the Goblin bonus falls off as the game goes on, and we have better units to put in. Um, so we will give this to Razor, because SF ulties faster than Razor, so we want them to hit at the same time. And we're not going to worry too much about Warrior Synergy right now, because it's a creep round, but, um... We're probably going to upgrade our courier soon. We'll sell this. We'll sell that. We don't need to sell that yet. Lycan's a hero that you want to take damage, so he ultis, but you don't want him to take damage so fast he doesn't ulti. A lot of these units that are like that, um, you want them to be level 2 really badly, 
most units in the game that go up in value when they get level 2 um, fit that description. Like, you want them to ulti, but if they take too much damage, they'll just die. Those units are, like, the best level 2 units in the game. Um, so, let's see. Uh, there's just a lot going on here. Um, we'll take the warrior bonus over a razor. Same thing with positioning. We want Clockwork to take the most damage. Lycan will take a little bit less damage than Jug because he gets attacked by this column. Jug gets attacked by these two columns. So that's how I look at it. Like how many units will potentially hit them? Axe will take the most because every unit over here will hit him. Axe is a perfect level two unit and this is why he's so good. If you have no concept of positioning, Axe will seem like a lot worse hero to you. Than he is. Enchanted, I'm sure. Action hand. Um, we're just gonna save here, right? Uh. With, with bones and spells, I come. So nothing's changed just yet. Really looking for these upgrades. We have two Slardars, two Jugs, two Lycans. Um, if we were on a win streak, I would definitely reroll here, but I'm not on a win streak, so I'm going to chill because my lineup's not so bad that I'm going to keep losing. Um, I'll sell, or like that I'm going to lose really badly. I'm just mentioning this because there's nothing to talk about in regards to positioning. If we lost that round, we would have sold uh, the extra axe for sure. We have a lot of good upgrades. Two razors, two jugs, two lichens, two slardars, two witch doctors. Got nothing. I'm actually going to reroll. None of this is good. There we go. We weren't getting an extra interest. I didn't want to sell anything, so that was pretty much a free reroll in terms of interest. Uh, and any upgrade we got was drastic, and we had so many, so that's why we went for it. Um, Clockwork does not fit our lineup, so we're not going to keep him. Um, it's even better now because Jug was tanking uh, all these units, so him being a second level is even better. Uh, it might be a loss here. He has seven units and we don't. Yeah, we did lose. So at this point, I didn't upgrade my courier because I really had no good replacement to put on there. I could have put like a second razor, but... Um, okay. So what we'll do is we will upgrade our courier now because we just need to... Um, for the sake of better rolls, we need... Three cost units, so these go up in value um, in terms of upgrading our courier. Um, we will sell something. If I win, I'll sell Axe. If I lose, I will sell Witch Doctor. Actually, Witch Doctor, I think, is better than Slardar. It's close, though. It's really close between these. I don't know if, what decision I want to make here. We want SF to take the least amount of damage out of anything because he's the squishiest most damage, so that's why he's in between the two Razors. Thank God we didn't lose, otherwise that decision would have been a tough one. So like, if SS between the two Razors, the only damage he'll take is AoE or, like, literally an Assassin jumping to right here. So when it comes to your backline, you can also consider positioning your backline. Finally. Uh, we have two Orcs. Um... Wolf round. We're actually gonna sell Cockwork because we need the gold. Did I do six out of seven last round? Forehead? I did. Busy talking about positioning. Sorry, guys.
So a disruptor is a unit that you want him to take damage, but you need him to get his ulti off. So his positioning needs to follow the same concepts that we've talked about. We want him to take damage, but not all of it. Um, once you get enough levels and tankiness on that hero, you can start considering them taking all the damage, right? It's just a balance of um, how much damage you think that unit can take without dying. So you should make an educated guess on that based on your understanding of the game, no matter how good or bad it is. Base your positioning on that educated guess and then see what happens in the game and pay attention to why it dies, what it dies to, that kind of thing.